Hey y'all, I'm James Wright. Welcome to my shop. And today we're going to be taking a look at how flat does a plain sole actually have to be? Let's start some arguments. So recently I did a video restoring a number seven, not this one, but another one. And in the video, I didn't flatten the sole. I didn't even put a ruler up it to check and see, uh, is it flat? And honestly, I don't think I've checked flatness on most any of my planes, other than a few of them that need to be that way. My stance on the subject is that if a plane does what it's supposed to do and gives you the shaving that it's supposed to give you, then it's flat enough. If the plane is not performing the way I want to, I'm getting a curvature in it, I'm not getting a true and flat surface out of it, or I'm not getting a consistent shaving or it's bouncing around, then I might go and check it for being flat because sometimes they get out of flat. Though with these metal planes, it doesn't happen very often. With the old wooden planes though, flatness was something you had to check all the time. Wood wears out relatively quickly and it needs to be flattened rather regularly, often a couple times a year if you're using it quite often. Steel on the other hand does not wear out very quickly and it's gonna take decades before it needs to be flattened again. Once I know that a plane is working the way I need it to, I don't even think about checking it for flat for 10 years or more. So yes, if you were to come over here and grab any of my planes and hold a ruler up to them, you will see light underneath there. And that's perfectly fine because this one, a jointer, really doesn't need to be that flat. I'm sorry, I just triggered a bunch of people because isn't the jointer supposed to be the flattest one because it's intended to flatten? Well, yes and no. It depends on what kind of shaving you're expecting out of this. If you're expecting half a thousandth out of this, this thing has got to be crazy dead flat. But if you're expecting hundredths, two hundredths out of it, then it really doesn't need to be that flat. In most traditions, the jointer is not for smoothing and finishing the wood. The jointer is for stock removal. You are jointing the board. You're taking off material here. You're taking off material here. You're going over the gap in between. You're hogging off material. So you want to take a heavier shaving with it. If you're taking really fine shavings with this, you're just wasting your time. In this case, mine's probably taking off about two hundredths of an inch or a little over 0.5 a millimeter. Once the stock removal has happened and I know that my board is flat and true, then I grab my smoothing plane and I take one pass, maybe two, just to clean up the surface a little bit. And this, this I want a fairly fine shaving on. In this case, around four thousandths of an inch or 0.1 of a millimeter. Every now and then, once, maybe twice a year, I'll want to take something thinner than that. Honestly, it's incredibly rare and it's incredibly uncommon. And usually the only plane I'm gonna do that with is my finest of fine smoothers. Everything else in the shop is gonna be taking a hundredth of an inch or more. All of my jacks and my jointers, they're all taking a relatively heavy shaving. And then when I want to clean off the surface and really detail it, I come in with my smoother. So if you wanna actually measure flatness, if I were to come in and actually measure this, from heel to toe, I would have a variance of about a hundredth of an inch. And I know that's gonna like, most people, oh, that's too much, that's way too much. Honestly, it doesn't matter. As long as the tool is doing the job it's supposed to and producing the result it's supposed to, I don't need to flatten this. Every now and then though, I do get a plane that doesn't do what it's supposed to. I can't get a flat surface or I'm having to put more pressure into it or it's causing a little bit of issue. And in that case, I'm gonna check it for flat. Case in point, this Harbor Freight number 33 trash plane. This was not flat and I was not able to get a good shaving and I was actually wanting to use this in a plane shaving competition. So for this one, I flattened it and you can see I'm scratching here at the nose, scratching here right in front of the mouth, scratching here behind the mouth, and then back up here. Everything else is a valley where it's lower and that's perfectly fine. This is flat enough to produce half a thousandth inch shavings. There's no reason to flatten this any more than that. When flattening, the only things that matter are the heel, the toe, and the mouth, particularly in the front of the mouth. If you're gonna be doing cross grain and you want to remedy tear out, having it flat at the front of the mouth is going to help that. The back of the mouth, eh, as long as it's out of the way, that's okay. But the heel, the toe, and the mouth, those three locations should be flat within the variance of the thickness you want to create. If you're putting a ruler up to your sole, you're almost always gonna see light through. And I, I really hate it when people tell me that they're, they're checking it with a ruler because that, that's, that, that's not gonna help you. It's, it's only going to give you more work than you need to do. And it's not going to produce a plane that works better. It might produce a plane that makes you feel better about it. And in that case, it might do a little bit better because you feel better about the tool you're using. But anytime you're using one of these to check for flat, it's in your head. But every now and then you're gonna get a plane that really needs to be flattened, or you're wanting to make a really good smoother that does the amazing work. In that case, you're gonna to wanna to spend some time flattening it. 
To do that, I go get a belt sander belt. Now this is a little one, I usually go get the bigger ones, and I get something with like a 36 or 50 grit, something incredibly coarse, the most coarse you can find. And then I'm gonna take the belt and I'm gonna cut it. This gives me a long strip that I can then tape down to a piece of glass. I usually take the frog off of the plane. Uh, it is an old myth that putting the frog on there is going to change the shape of it. You, you don't need it. If you wanna have it on there, great. If not, then oh well. And then I'm gonna set it on here, and I'm just going to sand it. And often I'm using a longer belt than this on a plate of glass. And after a few strokes, I can see where is it hitting. You'll often see this pattern on old jointers where it'll be shiny on the sides, but in the middle there'll be a big gullet coming through. That is from years and years of jointing the edge of a board where it's just rubbing on the middle of the plane. If your sole isn't as beautifully rusted as this one, you can take a Sharpie and just go back and forth across here. And particularly right in front of the mouth, I'm gonna do a line coming across and then at the heel and toe. Then I'll do a few more passes on the heavy grip. Some people worry about this not being completely flat here. That amount is not going to cause a problem. It might roll the toe over just the tiniest little bit, but not enough to really matter. But I've had a few comments that say, oh, that's gonna destroy it if this isn't perfectly flat. If you want to, you could spray glue it down, but I haven't found any need to. After a few more passes here, we've gotten rid of most of the Sharpie. There's still some Sharpie in here, and there's still some Sharpie here. And I can still see a little bit of that Sharpie going right across the mouth. Now at this point, I may keep going until I get rid of that Sharpie in front of the mouth. But at this point, I'm really not gonna worry about it. Unless I'm wanting to turn this into a competition plane. In that case, yes, I want this to be perfectly flat. I'm not gonna worry about that so much because I am getting scratches through it. So it is well within the variance and I'm not gonna be taking shavings thinner than the thickness of the Sharpie mark. After the 36 grit, I'm probably gonna go up to like 100 grit and then maybe a 200 and I'll usually stop there. If I really wanted to, I could take a 400 and polish it, but you don't really need it to be polished. It's going to get scratched up over time and that's okay. Now let's address the elephant in the room. Guru so-and-so says that every plane needs to be perfectly flat within a few microns. Honestly, it is a pile of hooey. If the plane does what it's supposed to do, it is flat enough. There is no reason to take it anymore except for if it makes you feel good. In that case, go for it, because if it makes you feel good, that's half the reason for doing things in the shop, because if not having fun, why in the world are you in the shop? So if it makes you happy to polish up the sole and get it dead flat within a couple microns, then have at it, have fun. I'm not saying you shouldn't flatten your planes. There are times when it really needs to be flattened. When I first got this number seven, it needed to be flattened and it needed a lot of work because it was actually rocking on a flat surface. And so I had to take down some material in the middle. This plane was not performing the way it should perform because the sole wasn't flat. In that case, I flattened it. it. Took me about five or six minutes on a really high grit and done. Some of the worst planes I've ever had to flatten took me about 10 minutes. So if you hear people flattening for hours and hours and days on end, it's usually because they're using a really high grit. They're not using something coarse like a 36 or 50. Do it with a 36 or 50, get through it, grind it off. It only takes a few minutes and then get back to work. But if the plane is doing what it's supposed to do, then why spend the time flattening it? And now's the point you get to go down in the comments and list all the reasons why I'm wrong and why guru so-and-so says I'm wrong as well. And that's perfectly fine because that's one of the things I love about woodworking. There is no right way to do it. There are a couple wrong ways that are dangerous or cause problems to others around you, but there is no right way to do it. And you can do it any way you want. And if you really want to spend hours and days flattening your plane, then go for it. There's no reason not to. It's not gonna hurt it as long as you don't grind all the way through it, which I actually have seen someone do. And if it makes you happy, that's the whole reason for woodworking, is finding the enjoyment in it. And if it makes you happy, then go ahead and do it. So this is another really fun one, and I'm really looking forward to seeing the comments down below. These are always, uh, these are always fun. So if you wanna have fun, go down, read through the comments and uh, find the arguments and jump in and enjoy the time. So go on down below and have some fun, and thank you, that actually helps out the channel. Anytime you get a comment with a whole bunch of arguments going on it, that, it actually helps out. So. Thank you. <laughs> if you'd like to do more than that, then you can think about the like, share, subscribe. Really, those help us get in front of more people. The more comments and things that happen, the, the greater the chance that someone else is gonna see us in the future. If you wanna take it even farther, there are a bunch of names over here. 
Those are some of the fantastic, wonderful, benevolent, gorgeous people on Patreon who are keeping the lights going, who are keeping these videos coming. And without you guys, we wouldn't be here. As well as people who've clicked the thank you button or the join button and become a member here, we do have special perks for both patrons and members, and we do special things every now and then. So thank you for that. If you want to help us out, think about doing that. And I think I'll do it for now. Until next time, have a wonderful day. I have to be careful which plane I use to tell this particular joke. Um, I don't want them to be incredibly true um, because if they are nice and true, then the joke will end up falling flat.